the family was the system of supply and finance and prosperity back in those days. And he said, I want you to get you out of the worldly system because I want, you, I want to show you what I can do for you. Unto a land that I will show you. And then at first, verse 2, And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and you will be a blessing. blessing. And then it's, I'll bless him to bless you. That's the reason for godly prosperity. Is so that, see, you can't bless someone else unless you've been blessed. Okay? I've heard it said you can't switch the lights on for the widow down the road if you can't pay your power bill. But God is into blessing us so that we can be a blessing. So, and we're going to take this very slowly, line upon line, because there's a stack of misconceptions around this whole, this whole topic. Um, and even, you know, even um, with due respect to uh, Pastor David here, most pastors won't preach on it because they're scared, you know, upset people, people will get offended and, 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 and leave the church. So as a, re- as a result of that, they're making apology for it when they're receiving an offering. But to my mind, if we can grasp the fundamental revelation of what really God has in mind for us, then... Um, then we can just we can just go on for God because I believe this is this is where God is taking us in these in these times. And we read the um, Genesis twelve one and two there. He says, I, "I will bless you, and you will be a blessing." And Abraham is an extremely significant identity in the Bible. He's first of all the crossroads of three religions Mm -hmm. and for the Christians particularly he was sort of and we looked at it not last time and Eddie shared with us last time and that was awesome sweetheart but the time before I think it was we looked at that that he was a type and I say this hesitantly this is my words I haven't read this he was a type of God uh, on earth I mean because he offered up his son mm-hmm. on the very same place that Jesus was crucified Mount Moriah yep. and then after that God said because you have not withheld your only son and his only son took a while to come about too by the way <laughs> then I know you do honour and respect the Lord your God. And I believe that that gave God covenant right to offer up Jesus. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the Faith Hall of Fame, it says there that he received Isaac raised in a figure. Mm -hmm. He didn't know how God was going to do this. But he said to the men when he left them, he said, you stay here. I and the boy will go and worship and we will return. Mm. See, it's not as if God shared the game plan with him. God just told him what he wanted him to do. And so, um, and of course, the obedience of Abraham too. So, you know, he's a very significant figure for us as well. Plus also too, we see in Galatians 3.29, it says, and if you be Abraham's seed, so if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So all these things that God shared with Abraham, we're entitled to stand on. Because we're heirs to that. And in the, the, the covenants that he made with him, and we're not going to go there, go there tonight, he said that, you know, this is an everlasting covenant for you and your seed and the generations. So, and then, of course, we see in Proverbs um, um, 10.22, and we'll come back to that later, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich, and it adds no sorrow with it. 
The purpose of God's and the end result of God's system to bless believers is so that they can be a blessing and to show, to establish God's bona fides. Mm. See, when he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and uh, uh, in Deuteronomy 8.17 it says, uh, talking about when they come out of the land, he says, and uh, this is King James, and thou shalt say in thine heart, my power and my, uh, the might of my hand has got me this wealth. Then in verse 18 it says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives you the power, yep. not the ability, the power mm-hmm. to get wealth. And I believe that word power there means the anointing the anointing to get wealth that he may establish his covenant Mm -hmm. see I believe that God's looking for a bunch of people that will walk in this and it will take us quite a while to walk it out remember when um, I think it was the second or third night I I shared on how the kingdom of God works and there's the parable of the soul, but it's, we didn't look at the parable of the soul. We looked at the end of it. When Jesus finished talking, he said, and how shall we liken the kingdom of God? But a man who plants seed, mm-hmm. sleeps and rises night and day, he, the seed comes up, he knows not how, but when the, whenever it's there, he puts in the sickle. Mm-hmm. And uh, then he says the second time, you know, how shall we liken the kingdom of God? And they're talking about the mustard seed, which I don't even have even seen a mustard seed, but it must be pretty jolly small. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but he said it grows up into a huge tree that birds come and lodge on the branches. What he was saying there is that the way the kingdom of God works in everything is you take a seed and you plant it. Mm-hmm. Remember the power of the sower was the sower sows the word. <laughs> but you take a seed, the seed can be words, the seeds can be actions, the seed can be behaviours, whatever. And you tend, tend it night and day and it will grow ever so slowly but then it brings up a harvest of the seed. Mm-hmm. We've seen things happen in people's lives and we remarked to each other, I said, they do really do not want the harvest of the seed they're sowing at the moment. Yeah, that's true. See, Galatians 6 and 9 says, Be not deceived, God is not mock whatsoever a man sows, that's what he will reap. And that's the law of Genesis. You know, you plant wheat, you get wheat. You plant whatever, and you get, you, 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 you get, you get whatever. So, you know, this will, I believe, uh, this is really just an introduction, right? We're not going to get into a lot of meaty stuff, but it's really just sort of, uh, we're going to plant in ourselves the Word of God, and I'm going to encourage you that between the meetings, matter of fact, I even thought of treating this as a closed door, because I think, you know, people coming in halfway through it, they won't have got the advantage that we've got of having the background of the previous sessions and, you know, they could go off half-cocked. And we've had enough of that in the body of Christ. Um, so, but, you, know, we, you see, the doors are open tonight. <laughs> but what we are going to do is we're going to look at this and, and I think I explained previously, being a teacher, I want to know how things work. I want to know how things work. I want to dig around in it, lift up the thing, the, the covers to have a look at how does it work? How does the word of God work? We know that we know that God loves us and his love is in here. Amen. Our understanding of his love is in here. And it may be in areas that we never ever thought we would walk in, but you know, let's just let God develop it. Let God develop it. See, we, the way God directs us is when we take one step at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, the old saying, it's easier to, move, to turn a moving ship mm-hmm. than one that's dead in the water. Dead in the water. Yeah. 
So what I want to look at tonight, the bottom line is we are blessed to be a blessing. God has a plan for money and it is not to serve the devil or the lusts of the flesh. God has destined us believers to take this world by storm in these end days and to turn it upside down. And it's going to be the church, a body of believers that know how to handle money and are very fixed on God's purpose for money. Now is the time for the church to learn what true wealth is. To tap into the riches that spring from the word instead of the world and enjoy living to bless others. And that's really the bottom line. God wants through his people, through his family on the earth, to show off, show, show himself to the world. Show himself to the world in a way that... And, you know, I've heard people criticise ministry because I've got a lot of money and that sort of thing. But look, when there is a disaster, a natural disaster, and these ministries are flying hold aircrafts with medical equipment and so forth. You need that money then. That's not when you need to be getting on your knees praying God for the money so that you can do it. It sends ships, shiploads of stuff because God is a good God, as we've already, <laughs> as we already see. Um, but first of all, we need to, need to cover some misconceptions. Number one is wealth or money or prosperity or, or, or supply, is it a blessing or a curse? You know, some Christians believe it's a curse. Deuteronomy 28, this is part of the law. It says, it shall come to pass if you will hearken diligently under the... Uh, Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. If you will hearken diligently under the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do, and that comes up very consistently in the Old Testament, to observe and do. All the commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord will set you on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings will come upon you. So the blessings came from being obedient. The blessings came from doing the commandments that... That he, uh, that, that, that he commanded it. And it goes down to verse 15, I think it is, or 14, and it talks about the various different blessings. Then, from verse 15 to, I think it's 60 or 63, he talks about the curses of not doing it. Yeah, that's right. I think I'd rather be on that 14, the first 14 verses of the blessing, thank you very much, than... Um, uh, than uh, getting the results. And, and really, as we said before, it's just coming as a result of be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. It's got, yeah, that door swings both ways, in good and bad. Nowhere is it stated that abundance of supply or money is a curse. In the Bible. Jesus, sorry? Only the love of it. <laughs> Jesus said, and I like the TLP. It's on our flyer anyway. I like the, the, uh, the Passion Translator. Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief comes not but, or means only to, steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life. And life in abundance. And the Passion Translation says it like this. Life in everything, life of everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in, it for, in its fullness until you overflow. Amen. Come on. Whoa, that is powerful, isn't it? Though? That says a lot. That says a huge amount. It's the thief that comes to destroy. Not God or the blessing. There are two. Curse comes from the devil. Blessing comes from God. Amen. And we need to, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you have that, but you know, I think we need to just sort of set a few um, definitions or parameters. Does God use poverty to teach us something? I say no. 
And the scripture for that is 3 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture, God uses his word to teach us. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. There's your correction. Teacher lessons. You know, you hear people saying, oh, God put me in the hospitals for me to learn a lesson. I remember hearing about a, uh, a pastor in America and he's a... Um, He's an ex-Marine sergeant, so no mucking around with him. He's, and he was in visiting one of his parishioners in hospital one day and they said, oh, God's put me in here to learn a lesson. And he picked, you know, that board they have with the medical charts on the bottom of the bed and he says, oh, you better learn quick. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in hospital... <clears throat> And there's a person on the bed next door you can witness who God will use it. But don't ever think God puts you in hospital. Mm. I remember hearing something once about a person who was in a particular place of employment and the boss was a real pain. And what happened is the boss broke his leg and had to be off work for a goodness number of months and they said to us, God broke his leg. <laughs> and after they'd gone, I said to Lenny, you know, God didn't break his leg, don't you? So you never know what is in a person. And there could have been all sorts of seed there that, that caused that. God's not in the habit, or not in the practice of breaking legs. As he, Jonathan, he's in the practice of putting them together again. Amen. 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 So... So, you know, that's a very, uh, very easy uh, answer. And even um, yeah, yeah, uh, poverty destroys in the story. All you have to do is look at poor countries in Asia and Africa and see the people there with, you know, not, a, not even enough water to drink and, the, you know, they're starving. Uh, that, the, you know, the, you, you don't need any more than that. So, uh, and, and really, in Proverbs 6.11 it says, so will your poverty come like a robber? Yeah. And, of course, we just saw John 10.10. 10. Who's the robber? Mm. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy it's not God's job. Jesus said, I come that you have life and life super abundantly. Super abundantly. In any, in any event, after the cross and the resurrection, the curse was destroyed. Yes. Come on. Yes, amen. 1 John 3, 8 says, the second part of it says, for this reason was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Mm-hmm. Destroy the works of the devil. Then in Galatians, let's turn over to Galatians. That's you're in Ephesians before, it's just one street over. Galatians 3. Ooh. Christ, uh, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. That, and I've got in my Bible, I like writing things in my Bible. Before that word, that, I've got a so. So that. So that the blessing of Abraham might come on the gentles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. And then, of course, Galatians 3.29 says, If you be Christ and you're Abraham's seed and ears according to the promise. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I, you know, I... I um, this is just awesome. The, so the, every one of the blessings that God promised to Abraham and his seed in Genesis 12, 1 that we read before belong to us. And so if we you know, revisit those, um, uh, those blessings, uh, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. Uh, you shall be a blessing. I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And in you will all the families of the earth be blessed. 
These are not just, and some people would say, oh, the blessings are just spiritual. Well, you go back to Deuteronomy 28. It talks there about, you know, I'll bless you in your storehouses. That's not spiritual. That's your storehouse out the back. That's your shed out the back where you put all your stuff in. And another passage there, I think it is, it says, and I will bless all the work of your hand. And oh, oh, we stand on that in our household. I will bless all the work of your hand. That that's, you know, that's what we do for work. We'll be blessed. Amen. And wherever we're working with, uh, can be a bunch of ungodly people if you like, but because I'm there, it's blessed. Amen. It's blessed. What? Companies I'm involved with, they are blessed because I'm there. In the name of Jesus. And then, of course, we see in um, John 6.63, and I think I quoted this before, it said, Jesus, Jesus said that the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So I believe the spirit and the natural are just intertwined. There's no scripture, and I had, didn't mean to look, I didn't look it up uh, tonight, is it first the natural, then the spiritual? Remember Clark used to say that a lot. The natural and the spiritual. Mm-hmm. Oh no, they're very, they're very closely inclined. You see Psalm 112, which talks about the uncompromisingly righteous man. He says, everything he touches his hand is blessed. Yeah. And the um, Psalm 1, you know, be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That mm-hmm. everything you do is blessed and prosperous and you know it likens it to a tree putting through it branches and all that sort of thing we need to look no further and this is an important one in mark 10 mark chapter 10 let's go over to mark chapter 10 um this is the passage of or this um this event or episode, starting at verse 21, but we'll probably even go back further than that. This is the, remember the rich young ruler that came to Jesus? And he said, good master. And Jesus pulled him up immediately and said, why call me good? Does only, remember we were talking about good before? Remember Victor, absolute good versus absolute cold, minus 273 degrees Celsius, that Jesus said, there's only one good, and that's God. But anyway... Where is it? Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Thou knowest, he says, what, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And then verse 19, thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, blah, 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 blah. And then he said, and, there, and, and he, he answered him and said, Master, all these I observe from my youth. This is a guy that was living right. And then it says that Jesus beholding him loved him. And then he said to him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven. Come and take up your cross and follow me. He was inviting him to become a disciple. But it says there, he was sad at the saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions or I like to say the possessions had him, he was trusting in he was trusting in the money he saw that, he measured that remember we talked about you know however you measure it will be measured back, he measured that as loss, Jesus was offering him an offer, sorry giving him an offer of a lifetime, different currency sorry, different currency (laughs) but he just saw it as loss Oh, I'm going to lose everything. And he couldn't do it. And then Jesus went on further and said, Up here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Children, how hard is verse 24? And the disciples were astonished at the words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is for them who trust in riches? Yeah. To enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. See, it's where we put where, where we put our trust. 
And what we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks is God wants us to trust him. That's what he said to Abraham. I'm El Shaddai. You don't need to work out all these schemes to try to produce a son. Trust me. I'm the guy who's got all the answers. I'm the guy who's got all the provision. Trust me. And that's what Jesus, that's what Jesus was effectively referring to here uh, in this guy. And, yeah, it was a very, very, I think Jesus was very sad. But did you notice that he didn't go chasing after him? Lay the word out. And if they don't accept it, then... Move on. That's right. That's right. By all means, pray for him if you like. Um, but we've had that happen in our lives. We've been sharing things with people and they just couldn't accept it. They, they, they got offended and they went away. But, you know, I said to Lynn, well, you know, Jesus never went chasing after somebody. Oh, hang on, let's sit down and have a cup of coffee and talk about it. He gave them the word. If you don't respect the word, then, uh, you know, you've got to go right back to the beginning, actually. <laughs> you've got to go right back to the beginning. So anyway, we better get our move. Oh, oh, it's nearly 8 o'clock. Oh, darling, I've still got a lot more to do yet. Okay, if we look at the, um, the things in Genesis, uh, not Genesis, uh, Deuteronomy 28, and that it talks about doing the commandments. Now, we know that they had commandments. Uh, my, um, my study in the Bible says that nowadays we've got two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. And love one another. Amen. So they're the commandments on us, I believe. And we've always got to be checking up on that love walk. To, and quite honestly, the devil will send past people through us so we can get offended. But we've got to, we've got to be uh, like Jesus. And, you know, our life's not at risk. See, Jesus on the cross said, what? Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And that's, that's, that's really it. That's really it. Well, I think we might wind it up there. I've got a stack ball on my notes and that sort of thing. But, yeah, look, we'll just wind it up there. There is no doubt about it that as we dwell into this the next little while, we will take it slowly and learn line by line, precept by precept, here a little, there a little, and get down in our consciousness all that God has for us. And I believe, I believe we'll, we're going to go on on this because I'm so excited about this. You know, we, ever since we got under the teaching of the Word of God, we believe God for things. I remember once upon just to practice believing God for things, I needed a new pair of shoes. This is when you buy a pair of shoes for about 60 bucks. Okay? You're going back quite a few years, decades you go now. I had the money to buy it, but I said, I'm going to believe God for these shoes. Just to sort of get used to doing it. I forget how they came in, but they did. <laughs> and it's just a, it's a matter of just growing slowly but I really commend it to you I'm really excited about where we're going to go uh, with this and if you want to see some more of this uh, stuff look by all means go to Faith Life Teaching I like that page that's my Facebook page or our Facebook page I should say and we share a show on that six days a week so there's you know it only goes for about 20 minutes this week so I believe his voice of victory, George, which is Kenneth Copeland's son-in-law, George Pearson and Gloria have been on how to handle wealth when you got it. Yep. Godly wealth, you know, in God's way. It's been good stuff. It's been really good stuff. So uh, bless you guys. I think uh, I think that'll do. Thank you for uh, thank you for coming. This program was brought to you by Faith Life Teaching.